Here is a sample of uric acid. Never mind where it came from, it's not particularly clean. Uh, this is one of the commonest forms of kidney stone. Now, if you think you've got kidney stones, and I think it might be hard for you to imagine that you haven't, if you have got them, please go and see a doctor uh, or someone similar because it doesn't get much more painful than that, as you know. I know some, I'm obviously not going to go through labour myself, but um, if I know someone who has gone through labour a number of times and compared to kidney stones, it is definitely worse, that is true. So, uric acid is the commonest cause. This can be caused by either a large turnover of purines, which are the things that make up DNA, one of the things that make up DNA, or um, <coughs> um, a lot of purine in the diet. So that's like a gouty type thing. And in fact, this stuff is the same as gout, the stuff that makes gout. There's something called pseudo gout as well. Um, and the other forms, the other common forms, are oxalate, calcium oxalate, and calcium phosphate or apatite. Calcium oxalate stones are caused by a variety of things. First of all, two of them are acid, one of them is alkaline. Oxalate and urate are acidic and are caused by an acidic environment <coughs> in, the, in the urine, acidic urine. And acidic urine um, often results from an acidic diet or it can be due to a metabolic imbalance of some kind. Um, oxalate stones can be caused by an overdose of vitamin C and the um, calcium phosphate, which is this stuff, also known rather ironically as apatite, is um, very, very hard compared to these because uh, uric acid stones are, have a hardness of between one and two. In other words, they're a bit harder than blackboard chalk. They're, they're about as hard as blackboard chalk. Um, apatite stones are really, really hard because they're used to make teeth and bones and um, tend to form in uh, alkaline environments. So it tends to happen when people have got like a peptic ulcer and they've taken a lot of antacids or that kind of thing. And they can also form, and this is quite important, when there's an infection where cystitis spreads up into the kidneys, um, for example, um, and they are, um, that tend, the bacteria tend to make the urine alkaline in that situation. And then things can come out of solution um, another thing that can cause it is trauma or bleeding into the kidneys uh, because then you get a nucleus around which crystals can form. And um, <clears throat> another cause of uh, calcium phosphate is vitamin D overdose and also lack of mobility because with lack of mobility the bones start to break down and the calcium phosphate tends to get passed out through the kidneys into the bladder and then you will tend to get crystallisation. So those are Another one is stasis. Now, stasis is interesting because one of the stasis, flow is very important in the body. If things are flowing through the body, generally there is a healthy state, and if things are stagnant and still, they will tend not to be. So, for example, if you've got an obstruction in the bladder or somewhere, or perhaps paraphimosis or phimosis, which are male sexual problems, then you will tend to get stasis and then kidney stones can form. They can also actually form in the bladder rather than in the kidneys. <coughs> there are also staghorn calculi. Now staghorn calculi are massive great lumps of stuff that fill the whole of the inside of the kidney and they can lead to metaplasia. That is that the epithelium in the kidney, which is dedicated to reabsorbing water because kidneys are mainly a reabsorbing organ rather than an excreting organ, they um, will become less efficient because they get replaced by different kinds of epithelium that don't absorb as efficiently and then you get a low specific gravity. Urine tends to be very watery and tends to stay low. So you get fixed low specific gravity. Um, strangury, that is the um, obstruction of the stones as they're trying to pass. Obviously something like this is going to be a lot more harmful than something like that. Uh, because of the hardness and uh, you get renal colic and it tends to feel around there it tends to move around there uh, but kidney pain can be felt anywhere around the abdomen it's not very well um, located the referral is all over the place so those are kidney stones I'm hoping to stick some diagrams in this afterwards um, just want to mention a couple of other things because they have a personal connection for me one of them is cystinuria 
Cystinuria is the failure of the kidneys to absorb certain amino acids, including cysteine, and a number of others, including ornithine. So they will crystallize because they become more concentrated. And that causes staghorn calculi, among other things, or it can cause smaller calculi. They can be broken down by lithotripsy, which is ultrasound applied to them. Um, another thing you can apply to staghorn calculi and other kinds of calculi is apart from changing the pH, so you change an alkaline pH to an acid if you've got alkaline type stones and vice versa, is to, <coughs> um, is to use Isartes tinctoria, that's madder, or a number of other things such as parsley, peat and so on. There are quite a few herbs that will help. Madder, being a red dye, has a strange effect of actually dyeing your bones red, uh, which is a little bit disturbing, I think. Um, and uh, the other one is antifreeze poisoning. Antifreeze poisoning, what happens with that is the ethylene glycol is broken down in the body into oxalic acid and you will get oxalate stones. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm obviously going to be doing the pregnancy video today. Um, now, uh, if you like this video, please rate, comment, share and subscribe. And I am planning to stick some diagrams in eventually. Um, if you don't like this video, please tell me why so I can improve and I'll see you, well, hopefully on the pregnancy vlog, but if you're not interested in that, then I'll see you tomorrow.